Our story presents Donald Crowley, a young man eagerly seeking the acceptance of his fiance's family. Little does he know that he has experienced a change. He is about to enter a world where his life takes on a new and different perspective. A change that may put a surprising strain upon his expectations. Guess who? Oh, hi, Skylar. Hi, sis. Where's your boyfriend? I thought he was meeting Dad today. Donald had to go to the doctor. He should be here any minute. I hope he needs Dad's approval. You know how strict he's about who marries into the family. I know. He never approved of Mother. Right to the end. Bearing her under her maiden name. That's sick, Skylar. Cheers. Oh, I hope Donald meets Dad's approval, or I'll never get married. I'm not like you, Skylar. I'm plain and you're beautiful. That's not true, Bobo. I'm extremely beautiful. Yes, you have everything a woman wants. Long eyelashes, a beautiful face, a gorgeous figure. I take after Uncle Herman. He was a Ziegfeld Foley's girl. That's sick, Skylar. Chin up, Bobo. Bobo? More like boo-boo than Bobo. Well, I'll see you later. I'm off to the beauty parlor. What for? To make a donation. Mr. Donald Crowley's here. It's so hard to get ugly help. Oh, send him in. Hi, Bobo. Hello, Donald. How'd the allergy test go? I don't know. I'm waiting to see. Jay asked me for pollen, wool, dust, and cat fur. Cat fur? They certainly are being thorough. How do you feel? A little strange. I, I hope I'm not having a reaction to the tests. Oh, Donald, I'm so nervous about you meeting my father for the first time. There's nothing to be nervous about. It doesn't bother me. Meow. It'll be all right. What did you say? It'll be all right. Before that. It doesn't bother me. Oh. Well, I hope nothing happens to upset my father. Donald! Oh, I don't know why I did this. It must react to the darn tests. Well, please don't do it while my father's around. I'm sure it won't happen again. Okay. I'll go get Dad. You sit here. Donald! Oh, I don't know why I did this either. Merch reaction to those darn tests. Donald, please try to control yourself. And get off that chair. Scat, scat! Shh. <laughs> now what's the matter? I think I'm shedding. Please, Donald, please! Oh, hello, Daddy. Donald, this is my father. Daddy, this is my fiancé, Donald. Bobo? Yes, Daddy? There's something to be said for being an old maid. Won't you sit down? So, you want to marry my daughter? Yes, sir. And you want to marry that? I do. You know I'm very particular about who marries into my family. Oh, Donald knows that. Right. Donald, what's the matter? I think it's fleas. <laughs> Donald plays a great game of tennis, Daddy. He always gets these cricks in his neck. Would you like something to drink? Yes, a double. I'll get it myself. I'd like a water. I think there's something stuck in my throat. What is it? A furball. Mr. Crowley, may I have a word with you? You may not know one's pride in one's family name, but our family is a very select stock. We have ancestors dating all the way back to the Mayflower, and we are recognized leaders of the 400. We are the epitome of aristocratic tradition, and I'd like to know that my son-in-law can take us in place in society alongside me. Bobo, may I have a word with you? Alone? Yes. Donald, would you mind giving me and my father a minute alone, please? Oh, yes. Donald's not usually like this. Honest. He's just having a reaction to an allergy test. Oh, please let me marry him. You said you wanted a grandson. I assume you'll give me a pick of the litter? 
Oh yes, please go along with it, for my sake. Fine. Donald, Donald, here kitty, kitty, kitty. That was fun, I've never played with a ball of yarn before. Sit down, son, everything's gonna be all right. I'm sure it will be, sir. Donald, Daddy has agreed to let us get married. Oh, that's wonderful. Look, I don't know what's come over me, but I assure you it's only temporary. Would you like to stay for dinner, son? Oh, yes, thank you very much. No, Donald, we're eating in the dining room. Look, actually, I'm not very hungry. I'll just roll home and open up a can of Friskies. No, Donald, please stay. No, I've embarrassed you enough. I'll be out that door, and by the next time you see me, I'll be completely normal. Good night. Mildred and Carol have found themselves in a small, out-of-the-way coffee shop as they meet for a short visit. They will soon have their friendship tested as they are momentarily given a chance to rise above their previously ordinary and insignificant lives. tastes delicious. It sure does. I wonder what kind of coffee it is. I don't know. Maybe it's on the menu. Ah, yes. Here it is. Cassidy's coffee, served exclusively. Cassidy's coffee, huh? Well, it sure has some great flavor. I'm going to pick some up on my way home. I will, too. My husband will love it. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies. My name is Barry Stevens. My advertising agency is doing a commercial for Cassidy Coffee. And since you two like it so much, how about being in it? Gee, I don't know. What do you think, Mildred? How do we know she's not a phony? How do we know you're not one of those people who go around trying to steal others' identities by promising to make them superstars? <laughs> yeah. Boy, you see, I want to show you something. Look over there, next to the jelly donut display. See the camera? Punch up three, will you, Charlie? Oh, yeah. See it, Mildred? That's Odd, yeah. but I guess it's on the level. How did you happen to pick us? Well, you see, this table, it's bugged. Bugged? What? Yeah, see the salt shaker? It's not a real salt shaker. It's a micronaut. Well, I'll be. Testing, Hello. testing, la, la, la. So what do you say? Will you do the commercial for me? Well, I guess, huh, Mildred? Of course. Couldn't you just imagine me on television, my husband George sitting at home, and I come up on his favorite program? Do you think you can get this commercial on Sesame Street? <laughs> I'll try. Now shall we get started? Of course. What do you want me to say? Us. What do you want us to say? Of course. Just what you said before. It was very natural. I believe you said... Yes, I had the first line. I said, my, this tastes delicious. And then I said, it sure does. I wonder what kind of coffee it and is. And then I picked up the menu. And then I yes, said... Yes, yes, ladies. We'll do that. You do one line, and then you do one line. And remember, be natural. Just be yourselves. Cassidy Coffee commercial. Take one. Now forget about the 80 million people watching you right now. Action. <laughs> 80 million people. <laughs> Cut! Uh, I'm sorry. No. It's my fault. I shouldn't have said what I did about the 80 million people. Would you like me to do the first line? I can do it, Mildred. Whatever. 
Just try it once. My, this tastes delicious. Good. We'll try it with the camera. Cassidy coffee commercial. Take two. Action. My, this tastes Hot. delicious. I can't take all day on this. Believe me, you better let me do the first one. I said I'll do it, Mildred. Perfectly, may I add. My, this tastes delicious. My, this tastes delicious. My, this tastes delicious. Perfect. You were probably just nervous in front of the camera. Forget it's a camera. Pretend it's a jelly donut. Cassidy Coffee Commercial, take three. Action. My, this tastes delicious. Hot! <laughs> she probably just gets nervous in front of jelly donuts, too. I could kill myself. She said that well. Listen, Miss Stevens, it might be better if I do the first line this time. It may give her some confidence seeing it done correctly. Look, Mildred, I've known you for 10 years, and I've never heard of anybody getting you confused with Jennifer Aniston. Well, I may not be no Jennifer Aniston, but I have had some experience in the theater. <laughs> the only experience you've had in the theater was in the last row of the balcony. That is a lie. I was in the play that my church group put on. Yeah, 50% of that audience converted to atheism. <gasps> Ladies. I'm running out of film. We'll try it one more time. And this time, you take the first line. That was a wise Definitely decision. A wise decision. Cassidy Coffee Commercial, take four. Action. My, this delicious Cassidy coffee. Hot! Our presentation today features a junior member of a refined and dignified family whose parents are concerned that their son marries well and that his future wife meets a certain social standard. Today, they will be confronted with their own prejudice as he brings home his bride-to-be. Tilly. Now, polish the silver and lay out the best china and linen. I want fresh flowers at the table as well. I believe the cattle lilies are in bloom. Yes, Mom. Hello, dear. Hello, darling. 
going to change as soon as you get back, dear. Our son is bringing someone home for Dinden. Ah, oh, so Junior's finally got himself a date, huh? But he's only 36 years old. 36. Seems like only yesterday he was playing with his tutu <coughs> trains and his rubber quack quack. That was yesterday. Junior's not very bright. The little quack quack. Hello, Mother. The big quack quack. So, where is she? Where's your date? Uh, just outside, Mother, but there's something I think I should tell you. Well, never mind that, just bring her in. All right. Moms, this is Ethel. She's gonna be my wife. Hello, I'm delighted. Hello, I'm going to faint. Here, fan yourself. No. Oh! oh, what is your father going to do when he hears about this? Just what is he going to do? I was concerned about what you were going to do. Oh, please, don't worry what I'm going to do. Really, son, don't worry what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill myself. What is your father going to do? This always happens. I'm so tired of prejudice. Let's talk this over sensibly. Sensibly? You talk about sensibly when you marry this fish. That does it. Let's go, Junior. I still have an hour before the tide goes out. Look here, Mother. Ethel is not a common everyday mermaid. She's worked hard to overcome her environment. She's vice president of Marineland. She has 12 college degrees, and she just won a Nobel Prize for her book on ocean mammals, Valley of the Dolphins. I told you not to eat too much seaweed. How's that, dear? Just fine. Uh, oh, that's a no-no. But it's Friday. Christina? It's your father. Well, hello, Junior. Hi, dads. This is my fiance. Well, how do you do, my dear? I'm gonna go get ready for Dindin. Um, it was a pleasure meeting you, my dear. Thank you. Uh, Christina? Mm -hmm. Did I just see what I think I saw? Yes, you saw what you saw. He doesn't believe it. I don't believe it. You better believe it. Uh, Junior? <sighs> Must you skip everywhere? <sighs> Listen, Junior. You, you have some weird, bizarre taste in women. You know that? Last month, you brought home a, a hippie. Ugh. This month, it's a, ugh, a guppy. Uh, sit down, Dad. I really want you to get to know Ethel. Oh, all right. Not on my tail! So, how did you two meet? Well, how does any mermaid get to meet a man? I lured him onto the rocks. And I was out in my boat, you know, the toot toot. And I was singing and giving him the old lure. Baby, it's you. You're the one I love. You're the one I need. Listen, there is nothing personal in this, but uh, I don't want a mermaid in the family. Your family? What about my family? How am I going to explain him? He doesn't even have a tail. Shame on you, Monroe. I always thought you were liberal. Well, but I am. I believe in equality for everyone, regardless of race, creed, or color. Good. Except fish. Oh, Dad. Darling, try to be sensible about this. Why don't you give me your blessing? <sighs> Come with me, Junior. I believe it's time we had a little heart-to-heart -heart talk. Get your fishy hands off me. Ugh. Junior, you've been a real disappointment to me. How, Dad? I always wanted a son. Oh, 
What's a mother to do? Whatever it is, will you do it fast? Me and Junior have to get married right away. Uh, you see, if I'm out of the water too long, I spoil. Oh, is that all? Um, here. Thank you. Say, what was your name again? Ethel, Ethel Mermaid. Ethel, aren't you a little old for Junior? What do you mean? Well, you're no chicken of the sea. Have you and Junior thought about children? Oh, you don't need to worry about that. I like large families. Yes, but Junior doesn't. Who needs them? I just swim upstream and spawn. Well, it's all right with me, but my husband has to have the final say. Monroe. So, have you thought it over? Yes, Christina, I have. You see, love is the only thing that matters in a marriage. Oh, there will be people that laugh at you. Like us. But statistically, the odds are in your favor. I have never heard of a divorce between a man and a fish before. You have my blessing, Junior. You may marry this mermaid. My heart overflows with happiness and joy, Dad. Let's go have Dindin. Come along, Ethel. Dindin. Now, now, dear. I'm sorry, I can't help it. Think of it as you're not losing a son, you're gaining half a daughter. Let's go have Dindin. Oh, uh, what are we having? Fish. Hopes nobody she knows. And now for something completely different. Edge of Theater Arts, sponsored by Mass Crafters, presents Life with the Peppertons. This is the best wall here. Hold it up for me so I can see it. Uh, how's that? I can't decide. Can you hold it straighter? Better, yes. Now, let me look at it from across the room. Hold it higher. Yes, I think that will do. That'll be perfect. Wait, let me look at it from the doorway first. All right, well, hurry up, because my arms are getting tired. Ow! Ooh. Mm. How am I supposed to tell anything if you're going to make such a fuss? What are you trying to tell? If I can hold a picture straight with a broken foot? Oh, please, you didn't break your foot. I heard the hammer hit the floor. After it bounced off of my foot. Just put your shoe back on and let's get this picture hung. There. Mm, no, that's not where it was. Move it just a little bit to the right. Yes, that'll be perfect. Now you just mark that spot. Cheryl, we weren't expecting you. I thought you said you'd call before you came over. Cheryl, are you okay? Of course she's okay. She just married Mr. Top of the Beef. What could possibly be wrong? Oh, my dear girl. I need some place to stay. Can I have my own room for a couple of days? Well, honey, that would be a little hard, seeing as right after you got married, we moved here. Your old room doesn't exist anymore. Now, what's wrong? You know, you can tell your mother all about it. It's Kendrick. He just doesn't understand me. He keeps asking me to do unnatural things for him. Well, I'm sure it can't be all that bad. You and Kendrick just need to adjust to each other. Why, it took your father and I at least a year before we got used to having each other around all the time. It's, it's not that at all. It's just, it's so totally wrong. 
Now, I'm sure it's not all that bad. It's like your mother said, we, it took us a little while to get used to each other. We had our own habits and ways of doing things. Have you tried talking to him about whatever it is he's asking you to do? Yes, of course, but it's just too much and he won't compromise. He demands it be his way. Okay, okay, just come here and tell us all about it. I don't think I can. Can I write it down? Of course, there's some paper and pens in that box over there, I think. My God, Cheryl! It's good you found out so early in your marriage what kind of man he is. It's not too late to end it. Although, it would have been better if you knew about this, this perversion before you married him. Fred, we have to help her. This is just too much. Cheryl, thank God. I thought I'd find you here. Come on, let's just talk about this. You cad. How dare you treat my daughter so? Just how dare now, you? Now, dear, it's not really all that bad. Not bad? Not bad? You never asked me to do anything like this. It's unthinkable. Cheryl, come on. We, we can work this out. I didn't realize it would mean so much to you. Stay back! Cheryl, mm. no, not that picture. It's been in the family for years. Think about what you're doing. If you need to attack, I'll just get you a bat. What? what? No, there, there's no need for that. Yes, there's no need. We can easily work this out. Now, come, sit, all of you. But Fred, what he's asking is just so unnatural. But it can be worked out. Now sit. Well, if this is the best you can do. Look, you two are going off all half-cocked about something that can be worked out. But Fred. Let me finish. Mom. Cheryl. Let's just work this out. Marriage and living together is about compromise. But Fred, you never asked me to do anything like this. Dad, you really can't ask me to do this. Cheryl, I'm not asking you to do anything. And Renee, just because I didn't ask didn't mean I didn't want you to. Fred, you... Yes, I wanted you to. But I loved you too much to even bring up the idea. And I still do. You mean... You were willing to give up your... for me? Yes. He's here to talk. I'm sure he feels the same way. Of course. Cheryl, it just doesn't mean that much to me if it means keeping you. Mm, you mean that? Of course. I did it for your mother, but she just never knew. You did? I never knew you wanted it that way. I did, but... Not as much as I wanted you. I never knew. Well, maybe I would have let you have it your way once in a while. See? They understand. Look, it doesn't mean that much to me. You may not see it right now, but I don't want you here. I want you at our house with me. And if that means not having it my way, then oh well. Really? Of course. I love you. I love you too. <sighs> well, now that that's all over, maybe we can go home and <clears throat> make up in private? Of course. I never knew I... You? Mm, yes. Well, maybe we can forget about the picture for now and find a little diversion together. You know what I mean. Of course. You know, dear, which way the toilet paper went on the roll, over or under, just didn't matter that much to me. Well, that was a nice little distraction from the world. Now, shall we see what we can do about hanging this picture? Picture? Oh, yes, let's. We were putting it on that wall, weren't we? Yes, uh, about here, I think. Yes, that will be perfect. 
Now, where did I put that hammer? Ah, there it is. Here we are. You moved it. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. That's not where you were holding it a few seconds ago. Well, I'm almost sure that it is. But it's your call, dear. Where do I need to move it? Mm, move it down and to the left. Better, yes. Now, just a little to the right. Now, move it down. A bit more. Too far. Move it up. There. That will be perfect. Uh, nail? What? Nail. What do you mean, nail? I mean I don't have one. It's kind of hard to hang a picture without a nail. I'll go get one from the garage. Be right back. Hi, I'm Tonda Seals, and this is my husband Jacob from next door. I'm sorry we haven't come by earlier to say hello and welcome you to the neighborhood, but we've been away on a trip, visiting our little nephews and nieces, and we just found out you moved in last week. Has anyone else from the neighborhood come by? No? Well, I'm not surprised. Not all of them are as friendly as we are. We do manage to get them to come together for a neighborhood potluck once a year, but besides that, most of them keep to themselves. We're thinking about throwing one next month, with a new family around. Maybe we should move it up a bit. Jacob, what do you think? Should we move it up? I know it would be short notice, but it would be fun. I sell Abilene Beauty products, and my husband is an accountant. He does quite well for himself too, though I hardly see him during tax season. We make up for it the rest of the year. What do you do? Oh, you're in your bathrobes. Did we interrupt something? I'm so sorry, it looks like we did. Jacob, honey, let's leave our little gifts and go for now. We'll let the two of them have some privacy for a while. We'll have time to talk tomorrow. No, 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 it's fine. We were just trying to hang a picture. We would love to stay and chat. And besides, it would be a shame to waste such a fine wine. It's not really that fine of a wine, but it is from a local winery. I'm sure it'll be more than satisfactory. Uh, give Renee and I a moment to clean ourselves up and make ourselves more presentable. Uh, we'll be right back. Oh, and I'll grab some wine glasses while I'm at it. Yes, please, have a seat and pardon the mess. We'll be right back. See, Tonda, they seem like nice, ordinary people. Ordinary? Who wears their dress clothes under their bathrobes? Go, Ms. Adams. Really, Jacob? I wish you'd be more serious about things. And besides, you didn't see what I saw when I was looking out the window. That woman was crying when she came in. Oh, and the way that man came roaring up in his car and running in, why, he could hardly wait to get inside. Honey, they just moved in. We don't know anything. And they were all smiles when they left. Jacob, I'm sure there's something funny going on here. Jacob, look at this. It's a gun. Lots of people have guns. The Fredericksons have a gun. The Thompsons hunt and have lots of guns. Even I have a gun. But you keep it locked away. You don't keep it in a box labeled office supplies. That is an odd place to keep one. Look at this. It's a list of gambling debts. So, lots of people keep lists of gambling debts. No, it's a list of people who owe them gambling debts, and big ones too. Here's one for $50,000, and another one for 100000 Lord Jacob, this one's about income from drug sales. Just who are these people? They seem like such nice people. That's what they always say on TV. They seem like such nice people, friendly, kind, always ready to help out. We had no idea. Jacob, they're coming back. What do we do? Stay calm, put everything back in the box quickly, and we'll get out of here as soon as possible. Here we are. Let's see. Ah, just as I thought. I won't need the corkscrew. It's just a twist off top. Well... 
It is just a new winery, and cork is more expensive than you'd think. Yes, well, cork allows the wine to breathe, but I'll wait for judge. Got a very nice bouquet. Yes, very nice indeed. Nice flavor, bit of a woodsy taste. Hmm. I'd had $200 wines not as good as this one. It really is excellent. Well, I'm sure they'll appreciate the compliment. I'm their accountant. They'll be very appreciative of the comparison. Well, it really is rare to find such a fine tasting wine at such a new company. Then again, all of this fine, expensive wine talk is just stuff and nonsense. A good wine is just that, no matter where it comes from or how much it costs. You know, Fred, this is exactly the kind of business we like to get involved with. It has such potential. Does it, Renee? I mean, we've got so much else on our plate right now. We've got the meeting with our producers next week and the shipment. Those are almost routine. They wouldn't take that long. Jacob, do you think your excellent winery could use a little bit of, shall we say, outside help? Well, I don't know. I know they'd like to enlarge their business, but they like to keep a tight rein on it. Oh, I'm quite sure they do. But I'm sure we can make them an offer they just couldn't refuse. Oh, excuse me. We're expecting a call from our suppliers, and this may be it. You know, Jacob, this really is a good wine, and we would love to help. You two seem like such a nice couple, and we love helping small companies grow. Yes, we do have a lot of small projects in the fire right now, but this wine, it's just excellent, and I'd really like to add it to the list if we can. Uh, Renee, could you bring me the business file? Of course. Uh, do you remember which box it's in? It's in the one marked office supplies. Um, no, this is the file for the trial. Oh, it's in the other box marked office supplies. Ah, here it is. How'd this get here? Thought I put this away already. Gonna need this tomorrow. Uh, please excuse me just a moment. I need to give this file to Fred and put this where it belongs. Jacob, you can't let them get their hands in the winery. Who knows what they would do with all that money? I know those papers look suspicious, but we really don't know anything. They never said they wanted to take over. All they said was they'd like to invest. No, they won't take it over. They'll just use the building for drug drop-offs and collection of gambling debts. Jacob, don't encourage them, please. No, Tonda. No, look at this, drugs income. $20,000. Gambling income, $200,000. Good Lord, Jacob. There's a whole section on income from prostitution. Just who are these people? Oh, sorry that took so long. I had to go over the whole list of those people. Uh, where's Renee? I thought she'd come right back after giving me the file. Um, she found something on the floor and said she needed to put it away. Must have thought it was important. Maybe it was that gun I was looking for earlier. This really is a great wine, Jacob. You think they'd be interested in a partnership? Well, that would depend on the terms. They might be a little short on money right now, but they do have a strong sense of honor. Who does? Fred, are you planning something? Just feeling out Jacob for a potential business deal. Business with a sense of honor. That would be a lovely change of face. That explains why it was so drafty in here. Yeah. Well, 
Most of the businesses we work with, let's just say, a business with a sense of honor is often sadly lacking. I can see how that would be difficult. Is that a normal situation in your line of work? What? A lack of honor? Sadly, it is. You know the old chestnut saying, honor among thieves? It definitely isn't true. The whole system, it's just based off of fear. Always has been. Sometimes you need to show them there's a better way. Then fear? Oh, yes. Sometimes you have to be honest with them. Sometimes we need to push them to see things our way. Our way always works better in the long run. They might not always like it, but in the end, it works out better for everybody. And you would want to help your way? Of course, if we do it. I would like to meet with your board of directors, bosses, whoever. It would be hard to see how we can help without getting in and looking at the operation and seeing just what we can focus on. Fred, are you expecting someone? I forgot to tell you, the Detective Brown is going to come over and pick up the box we have for her. Oh, good. That will make me so much more comfortable with the situation. Hi, Fred. Renee. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize you had company. Perhaps I should come back later? Oh, don't be silly. Besides, I'm anxious to get this over with. I'm not exactly happy with this unfinished business. I understand, but are you sure? Well, they're fine. They're neighbors. They've lived in the neighborhood for a long time. I doubt they're plotting anything against us. Plus, I'm planning a bit of a business deal with Jacob. I can keep an eye on him. He won't be too much trouble. Will you, Jacob? N no, not at all. No, no, we can keep our mouths shut. Oh, we aren't asking that. It just could be a little awkward, you seeing me pick this up. If anyone asks, tell him it's for our charity drive. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. That. Well, I, for one, will be glad it's taken care of. Uh, which one is it? Oh, it's the one over there marked office supplies. Oh, no, the other box marked office supplies. Oh, this looks like it. Once again, thank you for taking care of this. No problem, we're glad to do it. Can I talk to the two of you for a moment outside? Sure. Of course. Uh, we'll be back in just one moment. I'm sorry we keep getting interrupted. Just wait here a second. We'll be right back. Jacob, we've got to get out of here. Whatever they're up to, the police are in on it. Now, I don't think we're in any real danger. They're being friendly. And that cop, or whatever she was, wanted to talk to them about us. About us. Do you understand what that means? They're gangsters. They may want to do us in. Our lives are in danger! Now, stay calm. It won't do us any good to panic. Now sit down, they're coming back. <sighs> I am so glad to have that out of the house. So am I. So, Jacob, you think your excellent winery would like some outside help? I don't really know. Oh, Fred, I just realized they might not even know what kind of help we're offering. Jacob, Tonda, do you know what we do for a living? Oh, I think we know. We've figured it out. Oh, good. We're very good at our jobs, and it's always been profitable for everybody, all the way around. Could I set up a meeting with your bosses? I'd love to throw around some ideas and see what would be profitable for all of us. That is the point of it all, isn't it? Yes, it is. I guess it's getting a little late. Uh, Renee and I have a shoot scheduled for tomorrow morning, and those things can be exhausting if you're not prepared for them. Fred, I think we should tell them about the detective. I don't think anything will come of it, but maybe they should know. I don't know. Maybe it would be easier not to tell them. No, no I think you're right. So, Detective Brown and our family have been friends for years. She's been building a case against the major crime cartel in the area. It's taken over a year to gather the evidence, but the problem was... The problem is that some of the evidence leads back to some people on the force, and she wanted a safe place to keep it and protect it from disappearing. 
And what better place to hide a box than... With, with a, a lot, lot of other, other boxes. boxes. Yes, we were moving and we thought nobody would notice it amongst the other mess of boxes. But what about the gun? Oh, that old blank gun? We're shooting an advertisement tomorrow and we're basing it off of an old spy thriller. It's just a prop. Yes, we found it's much more fun to entertain an audience while selling a product rather than making them fear not using it. You're in advertising? Of course. We thought you knew. Look, here's my card. I really do mean what I said. I'd like to give your winery some help. I'd like to offer our services free of charge for six months. Well, only our labor and development anyway. Yes, and if after that time they feel we've helped, we can get together and discuss more formal arrangements. Uh, of course, of course. I'm sure they'll be interested. I'll try to schedule something tomorrow morning. Thanks, I like that. See, Jacob, I told you there was nothing to worry about. <laughs> you know, Renee, <laughs> they were a very strange couple. <laughs> <laughs>